EDA. It stands for Exploratory Data Analysis. In this video, we're going to learn what is EDA, why you should use it, how you can use it with a complete demo. Coming up. All right, let's get into the video. EDA, which actually stands for Exploratory Data Analysis, helps you go ahead and get the insights from your data. As someone who's working in the field of data science or someone who is just practicing it, one of the key things that you really want to do before you go ahead and start making models is to understand your data. Now, data comes in various size forms and have different characteristics. So one of the very easiest way to understand or to get a summary of your data is to actually use an inbuilt function of Python that is uh, dot describe. I think we all have used that gives you the mean, the count and all those. But uh, to be very honest, that's not enough. That's good to get a slight overview from a 10,000 feet, but maybe you want to go ahead and understand a little more about your data. That is when EDA, Exploratory Data Analysis, comes into play. It gives you a summary of your data using statistics and some graphs. Uh, widely used in the, in the field of mathematics and also nowadays, not nowadays actually, data scientists have and data engineers have started using EDA. So in this uh, demo, what we are going to do is we will move to our screencast now and see on how you can go ahead and get started with EDA by just writing one line of the code. So let's get into the screencast. So right now you can see I have Jupyter Notebook uh, open on my screen. Uh, what I'm gonna do is in the beginning, I've also written some of the text that may help you. I'm gonna give all the links in the description. So first we are going to import pandas as PD. Then we are going to use a data set that is a Titanic data set that's in my data set slash Titanic slash train dot CSV. You can just search over the internet. You can find uh, many Titanic data sets and many other data sets too. Apart from that, now what we're gonna do is, is very simple thing that we would usually do is we'll write df dot head that should give us the uh, output of first five uh, records you can see that and what we are also going to do is we are going to use describe function now uh, we'll see at the output of describe we have not reached eda till now okay so just hold on this is not the T, uh, eda i'm just telling you what are the existing functions that are already available and we all use it so over here you can see we get uh, all the uh, columns, we get the count, mean, standard deviation, minimum, uh, how much was 25%, 50, 75 and maximum value. But this kind of doesn't give me a lot about my data. So what I want to use is another Python library that is called pandas profiling and the way you install it is with this. You write pip install pandas dash profiling. And also if you just go ahead and Google it, you can also check their GitHub repository and also check their read the docs. So uh, uh, you can just come uh, over here and read what all they offer and how to install it. And I think uh, you can also come over here. So I'll give all these links in the description. So this is the actual library that we are going to use it. And the way you install it is by pip install pandas profiling. So once you have done that, what we are going to do now is we will import this library in our uh, Jupyter notebook, I have written import pandas underscore profiling as pp. So the final thing that is left is use this pp dot profiler, or oh, sorry profile, and then report, and then give your data set variable name. That's it. I've used pp from pandas profiling dot profile report, and that's it. I'm going to press shift enter but I think it may give me an error. Okay, no, I have actually imported it. So it shouldn't give me, so you can see it is creating, it is summarizing the data sets. Now it is generating the report structure. And once that is done, you can see it is giving us the HTML output. Now come over here. This is so interesting. So now if you see your pandas profiling report is actually divided into six parts, overview, variables, interactions, correlations, missing values, and sample. So if you come to this overview section, you first see number of variables, that is 12, number of observations, that is records. If there are any missing cells, yes. Duplicate rows, no. Total size in memories, 83.7. Average record size, variable type, 
numeric are five and categorical are seven so very very detailed uh, if you want to click on some of the warnings you can also go ahead and check that and you can also see some of the uh, uh, production uh, details okay so uh, we'll come to the next session that is variables i'll come here so this is very interesting i really love this part where it gives you the details about every single variable for instance this not this time i have passenger id it says it is unique and it is uniform are there any missing values no there are no missing values what is the mean 446 what is the maximum 891 and so you can see the the passenger ids starts from one and it goes till 891 and now the very interesting thing also here is if you click on toggle details oh my goodness look at the number the details and stats you get you get statistics you get histograms you get common values you get extreme values so a lot many details just for one variable now i'll come down and i'll go to uh, this one maybe uh, age you can see age it says missing which means there are some missing values there are total 88 distinct values 177 missing the mean is 29.69 which means the people traveling on the uh, titanic their average age was 29.6 almost 30. Uh, the maximum age was 80 now you might see what is 0 0.42 i mean maybe there was a kid right there was a four month kid who was traveling on, on, on titanic so that's one thing then we'll come back it will give you all the details in the same way for all the variables and the next part that we move is to uh, interactions now interactions are very very interesting you can actually go ahead and actually get a graph for instance now i have plotted a graph between passenger id and age you see this is the relation that we get or you can also create this um, passenger id and if i just maybe click on this one yep um, you get many other correlations in kendall uh, spears man and all you can get that so definitely you can go ahead and explore a lot more then we, we have covered interactions correlation then comes to the missing values you can see uh, the, the the missing values that we have for different variables over here matrix you can clearly see that age and kevin has a uh, good number of missing values whereas, whereas others don't have actually you can see 891 891 891 age has only 714 records and cabin has only 204 records which you click on matrix you clearly see that there are some missing values now we come to the final one that is the samples it gives you first 10 rows i believe yes first 10 rows and then it gives you last 10 rows so can i give you a basic idea about this uh, data uh, now i have i have not actually uh, uh, really made this one but i got inspired by an amazing article that's written by Juhi, I'm gonna pull that on the screen. Uh, I'm gonna give this article description too in the dis uh, in, in the description box, so you can also go ahead and check this. She has also used the same data sets, and uh, the reason I'm sharing this uh, resource with you is that I just don't want you to go ahead and start copying what I'm doing in the video. I also want you to go ahead and figure out the different blogs and resources that are available. So uh, that's in this video. Now, yeah, that's all. So that was all about EDA using Pandas profiling. There are many other EDA libraries available uh, in the in the in the Python ecosystem too. So definitely go ahead and check that out. And if you if you someone who's working in the field of data science, engineering, and computer science, in this channel I upload videos related to these three topics. Uh, consider subscribing. And my name is Ben Simon, and I'll see you in the next video.